Now let's take a look at a small producer. Suppose, you know, people who make goods at their home and they sell those goods, so home chefs and whatnot. So suppose there is a person who wants to uh, produce and sell anything, let's say ice cream, can be anything, ice creams at home. So this person who's very good at selling ice creams and he has decided that he's going to produce, start producing a large amount of ice creams and he's going to sell them at profit. People. Okay. So, and of course, before you just start to do uh, start your business and obviously you can understand that there is going to be a lot of initial investment. You have to buy a lot of equipment and cooking utensils and ingredients and stuff. So you want to do a bit of market analysis first. Try to figure out whether this venture will be profitable or not. So suppose this person, he does his analysis and this is what he finds. So this is quantity, this is price, okay. demand and supply, this is demand, this is supply, a relatively inelastic supply. So let me talk about why supply will be inelastic. Now this person has a very inelastic supply because he is producing at home. Remember, this is just a house chef, a home chef. Uh, he doesn't have a huge factory or a plant where he can go and make ice cream. He doesn't even have a very big machinery. He's cooking at home. So regardless of what happens to the price level, he isn't going to be able to supply, it change his supply too much. So this person is assuming an elastic supply. Effectively, what that means is that even if price were to increase a lot, oh, wait, what have I done? Oh no, that's a big mistake. I've messed up the demand and supply curves. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so what we are going to have is, okay, let me just get rid of these things first. Okay, so what we are going to have is an inelastic supply curve and we have a demand curve, which is, sorry about the mistake. So the risk, let me just draw a better supply curve inelastic okay now the reason supply is inelastic is because even if price were to increase by a lot in the market it wouldn't really matter because he can't increase his supply too much he is restricted by the fact that he is producing ice cream in his kitchen so there is a capacity constraint and there is only so much that he can produce from a small residential kitchen so what he calculates is that this is the price in the market. This is the quantity in the market. But what he knows, what we all know, is that demand for ice cream is seasonal. So this is the scenario in summer, uh, in winter. When it's time for summer, there is going to be an increase in demand for ice cream. And this is what he is expecting in a few months time. Demand is going to increase. So let's say this. And when that happens, he expects this to happen. Quantity demanded is going to increase a little bit. But what he is more interested in is that price is going to go up. So when he starts producing in winter, 
price is P1, which is not very high, but he decides that he should start producing anyways, because in a few months time, when it's summer, demand is going to increase. And as a result, Q will increase by a little bit and he will try to meet this demand as best as he can. But what he is more encouraged about is that price is going to experience a very large rise. And so he decides to start the business of making a string. But suppose he had made a mistake in his assumptions. So let's take a look again. So uh, we have quantity here. We have price here. The demand curve, same demand, doesn't matter. But the mistake he had made was that he had assumed that supply is inelastic. Supply is actually elastic. Now the question is why supply elastic? Because supply is inelastic. His personal supply is inelastic, which is fine. But what he had failed to consider is that he is not the only producer. A lot of people produces ice cream. And when you take all these people into consideration in the market, not just for this one person, but for the market as a whole, supply is very elastic. So let's write that down. Supply is elastic. So what does that mean? That means, well, this isn't changing. We're still at the same equilibrium condition. And of course, when it's summer, D is going to increase. So let's have a very similar increase. D has increased. But now look, the problem is right here, both price and quantity demanded has increased. There's no issues with that. The problem is scale. You see the quantity demanded has increased by a large amount and price has not increased by too much. And this is bad for him. Quantity demanded has increased, but he can't take, you know, take advantage of this benefit because how much he can produce is constrained by the fact that he doesn't have a big factory to cook or, or to produce his ice cream in his producing from his kitchen. So he cannot take full benefit of this increase in quantity demanded. What he was hoping is that price would increase by a large amount as we see here. But that hasn't happened. Price has only increased by a little bit. And as a result, his business is not going to be as profitable as he had expected. Maybe he will make a loss, maybe not. Maybe he will still make a profit, but profit won't be as much as he was expecting. And so once again, you see that because in our decision-making, we had failed to consider elasticity or we had failed to correctly consider elasticity, the outcome has not been what we were expecting. So, and that is why we need elasticity when we are doing a demand and supply analysis or a market analysis, is that just looking at demand and supply without elasticity doesn't tell us the whole story. Considering elasticity is very important. So effectively, these are the only two examples that we are going to look at. Uh, I am going to stop here now. Uh, this is the end of our second lecture. And um, what I am going to ask you guys is that if you can, it, it may prove to be a little bit difficult for some of you. And if it does, that's fine. But if you can, try to come up with your own examples, at least two, maybe three examples of situations where a decision that is made by 
a producer or a consumer or a government, whoever, a decision made uh, does not lead to the desired or expected outcome because elasticity is incorrectly included in the analysis. All right, so give it a go. And I think at least some of you, maybe quite a few of you, should be able to come up with an example. All right. So this is the end of lecture two.